Hello, hello, hello. I hope everyone is doing amazing. Um, you wouldn't believe how hard it was set up this uh, Zoom today, which was really annoying me. So um, we got there in the end and I thought I'd jump in live. Um, this isn't a scheduled event or anything like that. It's just that I thought I'd jump in live, give some value to the group. Um, and this live stream really is around um, recession proofing your business. Okay. So I've been thinking, I've been doing a lot of pondering and I've been hearing a lot of uh, things going on in the business world. Um, and I want to share with you some ways um, or, or some tips and some strategies even um, that has helped us at Shift Success, um, you know, through these times. Um, it's helped us thrive, in fact. Um, and what you want to take from this is hopefully you can implement into your own business. Um, but before I begin, before I do that and share my screen and go through the actual um, presentation with you, can you just let me know if you can hear me? That'd be awesome. Um, put a like or a comment or something so I can uh, know that you're hearing us. Um, and if you are watching on replay, type in replay so I know you've watched it over again. Um, and of course, at the end of this, we can go through some Q&A if you want to as well. So if you can hear me, please do drop a like or something. That'd be pretty cool. So we've got Darren, we've got Bill Betts, we've got Kelly, we've got Mark Broadbent, we've got Gary Pinion, got a few people. Awesome, awesome stuff. So I'm going to share my screen now. And again, this presentation is seven ways to help you recession proof your business. Um, things that you can implement now, there's things also you can implement in time for the next recession. Okay, um, there will be another one after this, I'm sure in years, years to come. So implement these things now and it'll get you uh, in good stead. We've also got Gareth Dickinson. Hello, hello, hello. We've got Carl Christie in the house. We've got Ricky Jones in the house. Awesome. So let me just put this to the side. I'm going to share my screen. So hopefully you can all see that. I know, I know I've got some, I fancied something sweet, Mark, um, some cherry Coke. Um, I've got some water here as well. I know Jane Bramble would probably tell me off for of that as well. I know you fitness, you fitness freaks. I've got Michael Northgate, Norgate, sorry. Um, it's been a while, mate. Hope you're doing well. I've got Rachel Hensley in the house. Awesome, awesome stuff. So great stuff. So um, this is seven ways to help you recession proof your business. Okay, it's gonna be a quick presentation, but obviously you can have a Q&A at the end. Um, and the first one being is something called marketing channels. Okay. Now, this is something I like to call lead source concentration. Now, you run the risk in business that if you're your leads, all the people who want to do business with you, who are interested in um, Resolution isn't good my end. It might be your connection, Carl. I don't know. So lead source concentration basically means that if all your leads are coming from one place, one location, that could be very troublesome for your business, okay? So if you're running Facebook ads, as an example, um, then, you know, and that dries up for whatever reason, the recession or people aren't, you know, engaging with your lead magnets as such, then unfortunately, um, you're not going to drive any new business into your, into your business, which can be very worrying. Instead, what you want to get yourself in the mindset of is operating like a media company. Okay. Now the cohorts will know what I mean when I say this, because I try and, um, um, distill this into them as much as possible. Um, but there's, there has to be a number of ways that you want to generate um, leads into your business. So, um, you know, some shift success, we have our Facebook community, we have YouTube, we have my book, um, we have podcasts now as well. Um, we have Instagram, we have a lot of different ways that we actually, um, people can get in touch with us, people can reach out, they can engage that content. And the reason why this is better is because let's say YouTube goes down or 
um, Facebook goes down, then we've still got about five or six ways of people to get in touch with us. So if you're in business right now, starting out, or uh, maybe you're in business right now, and you're relying on one source of generating leads, really think about not having your eggs in one basket. And think of the various different ways you can generate leads into your business, okay? And the way to do this is to operate like a media company, you know, and look at Disney. Disney are doing phenomenally well. I think they've generated, you know, billions during this recession by having Disney Plus now. And, um, you know, they've obviously got the theme park. They've got, um, you know, DVDs that used to sell. They've got online sources. So they're everywhere that people can get in touch with them and have their product. So really utilize this. It's going to be a great way for you going forward. And you're not going to be relying upon one um, source of um, leads of people getting in touch. Really key. Really, really key multiple ways. And with that being said as well, you don't need to be on every platform, just, um, you know, platforms that your target customer is going to be on where you know, you've done the research where they're actually going to be. So the next one is income. Okay. So income is a really key one. And, and the way, you know, I always see this time and time again, when people start to earn a bit more money, let's, let's talk about the police, for example. And typically, I know I did this as a DO, when you start getting a pay inc increase in income, um, you then start, um, you know, increasing your lifestyle. You go, oh, you know, I can afford this. I don't know, so and so now this car, or I can afford this house now. I can, you know, do this, and all of a sudden, you're not actually financially more um, wealthier. You're actually exactly the same because what you've done is increased your income through a pay rise or promotion, um, but also you've inc increased your lifestyle expenses as well, which is not great really because you want to make sure there's a big um kind of margin in there um, and again with business when business owners start to produce a lot of money in their business um they got splash on certain things they start invest in things that they don't really need and unfortunately it doesn't make them secure as they would be especially in times like this so some things that i'm into utilizing my business and have done for a while is having something called a profitable bank strategy okay now this is something we um we go through in our cohorts as well. And basically, um, this is a way to make sure you're more profitable, to alleviate any stress, and to also um, just make you get rid of that kind of anxiety of, of what could go happen, what could go wrong. Um, so the way this works is having six buckets within your bank account, okay? So let's say you have your core business bank account, you then have little buckets, which you can name, and I'll share the names with you, with the first one being income account. And you would then automate that process. So when money hits your bank account into the income account, automatically it gets diverted into six buckets, okay? You can have five buckets. I've got six. Um, I will explain why in a second. Let me just have a bit of a drink. We've got Chris Booth. How are you doing, Chris? We've got Alex Ross. Hey, Alex. We've got Matt. Awesome. So the first bucket in your main bank account is the income account. And this is where all money, more, more revenue comes into your account. It's where all the sales and income and different various sources goes straight into this account. Pretty simple. Okay. The next one is your tax account. Okay. Now this is where you put cash aside for tax and we allocate about 25% of our income into this account. Okay. Um, now the reason we do this is because time and time again, you know, business owners, unfortunately, they go through business, they produce money, and they forget about paying tax. So when it's time to come there to do their tax returns or their VAT, they haven't got any much cash or liquid in the bank because they've spent it on business activity. Well, what you could do straight away is actually when that income hits your bank account, delegate 25% of your revenue from the income account straight into a tax account, okay? That's automated. You don't, you don't you need to think about it. It goes straight there, and you know that at the end, when it's time to do your books, you've actually got um, money there to go to pay tax. Unfortunately, guys, there's a few things you can't avoid in life. Well, depending if you, you know, Dubai, that's a tax haven, um, which are taxes and death. Um, so having this account will alleviate any stress last minute of grabbing cash to pay tax. The next one is profit. You're in business to make profit. Okay. Um, you have to have a margin there. Um, please do not confuse this with the purpose of business. The goal of business is to make money, of course, because that allows you to play the game and make a bigger impact. But the purpose of business is to solve people's problems is to 
put your client in a better place than they were before. Okay. It's to move them on in life. So the profit account is where essentially you do just that. You put profit away straight after um, the tax. Okay. It, automatic. And we allocate about 15% minimum into this account. And this is where you can give and take depending on what profit you want to earn. But by doing this straight away, it knows that we're profitable straight away. And unfortunately, when you don't have this in place, you start spending things. And then when it's time to do your books again at the end of the year, you're like, hang on, we're, we're not that profitable here, which again, it's a bit of a, it's not a great place to be in. Um, you know, you're in business to make a profit and to, you know, live, live the life that you want, live the lifestyle, you know, give your kids, give, you know, your spouse that life, if that's what you're doing for them. So we allocate around 15% into that account. Okay. Next is our trading account. And this is where all expenses are paid out of. Okay. So we allocate around 55% of our revenue into this account. So things like paying um, team members, like payroll, it could be marketing expenses, venue costs. It could be um, um, software um, that we pay for, such as Active Campaign or, or Zoom, this platform I'm using right now. So essentially, everything we pay for out of the business, our costs um, are out of this account. Okay, that's 55% of revenue. And this is the thing where I wish more businesses are built in. Okay, I really do. Um, because it will leave you a lot of stress going forward. And this is called the vault account. Okay, this is our savings account. This is our rainy day fund. Okay, and we allocate around 4% of our revenue straight into this account. And you know, when things do go wrong and people, you know, in the recession and, um, or in fact, you know, you go through a cash flow dip in business, knowing you have a cash buffer there really, really helps through these times. So having a vault account, a rainy day fund in case something goes wrong, um, always, you know, that you may not spend that for a while, by the way, that's just building up and building up and building up, um, is a great way to actually, um, cushion yourself when things do go wrong. Okay. Now, this is where I mentioned about the six bank, six buckets and five buckets, depending on where you're at in business. Now, this next bucket we have is sort of our contribution account. This is our charity account. This is where we essentially drive about 1% of our revenue into this account. And this is where we give back. So, you know, for those who have been following us a while, for every cohort member that joins us, we actually give back to third world countries, such as um, children in Tanzania with life-saving water. We've got underprivileged families in India and we provide them with shelter. And we also have women in Malawi and we give them business education. And that's how we contribute through, um, through our business. Okay. Business should be used for a force for good. Now, depending on where you are though, and you're just starting out, um, you may not need that because, you know, I firmly believe you've got to help yourself first before you help other people. Okay. And that's not, um, taking away anything from those who are doing charity work right now. That's fantastic. I just believe that if you're more successful in life, if you have more money, you can make a bigger impact in the world. There's a great um, analogy where, you know, if there's, you're on an airplane and the oxygen masks come down, you put your oxygen mask on first before helping your child. And that's what I like to think about with this, you know, being successful, producing a lot of money first, then donating um, to, to worthy causes. Um, so that, that's the kind of strategy we have going on. Um, and I know if you implement this right away, even from the start, before you've, you know, even thinking about producing income um, from your business, I know it will make you more profitable. You're going to cover tax straight away. It's going to alleviate any worries about any cash flow problems because you're building a vault. Um, and of course, you get to give back um, in the future as well. Really great strategy. Highly recommend you do it. So the next one, let's have a bit of a drink. So we've got a question by Bill Betts. Um, we use QuickBooks. Are these accounts set up in the in there or physical accounts? Bill, they are set up in the physical accounts in actually. So where are with Barclays? We would set that up within Barclays. We'd open another checking account with them and we would just name those accounts, which I just mentioned there. So they're actually done in your bank account. Okay. So the next one is being lean. The third step to recession proof your business is being lean. Okay. Now what we do, these are good habits we do in our business. We have quarterly reports from our bookkeeper and we go through these reports 
um, by basically cost cutting. So we'll look at certain things we don't need in the business anymore. We will look at certain things that re need renegotiating on. Um, so for example, um, venues, right? Venues are a big cost for us at Shift Success. We will renegotiate um, if we feel like we could get a better deal somewhere else, okay? And why this is so important is because you've not got any massive overheads in your business. Um, so staying incredibly lean during these times is, is you know, is essential. Um, you can operate your business at a very low um, run rate, um, which is, you know, a great position to be in. Um, you want to look at things like your marketing in here. You want to look at um, certain things as, um, you know, any suppliers you might have, such as brand uh, branding or uh, any brochures that you may be paying for. It could be um, any artwork that you need designing. It could be you know, it could be anything. You just look at the cost and seeing where you can squeeze it. Okay. It could be even your personal, um, uh, costs right now. So if you've got phone bills that you're paying for, you're paying for TV packages that you don't really need. Um, if you're paying for, um, I don't know, God, I don't know if Avon's still a thing, but Avon popped into my head right now. Um, any things that you may be paying for really you don't need and um, that's being lean that's being you know financially literate because then you can use those money that money to then fund future future business um yeah operationally operations or you can fund certain investments in yourself or in actual assets that you may or may not own so that's what we do it's a great habit we basically get a quarterly report from zero which is our bookkeeping software we'll get my bookkeeper on we'll get my operations um um, manager on. We'll look through all the costs in the business, the all the installment plans, everything going out, and then we'll look to renegotiate or cut those costs. Real good habit to get yourself in every quarter, just a, an hour and 90 minute meeting, which is, uh, which is really healthy for your business. The next one we do is having a virtual team, right? I, I, I did a blog post on this the other day, and I think there's so, going to be so many businesses that are going to look at this opportunity and they're going to build businesses around being virtual, okay? Um, you know, for those who don't know, I have a team member who's in Cape Town, South Africa. I have a team member who is in um, Kent. I have a team member in London. I have a team member, um, external team member in Pune, India. Okay, so um, there's a few benefits to this. And I think if you can build a virtual team, go for it. I mean, it's helped us massively. We can still operate and work from home. We're still, you know, speaking to police officers. We're still speaking to nurses and we can still get shit done, right? So some of the benefits of this is the barriers have been removed. Before we had the internet in the old days, and this is something I wrote about in the opening chapters of my book, is that we had to, you know, send um, homing pigeons or, you know, horse and wagon to, to do d deals or, um, you know, you had to be in one location to communicate with your team in the day to day. But right now we've got software like the software I'm using right now, which is zoom. We have things like Slack and Skype. We have WhatsApp, which has completely removed the barriers of communication. And that's why we can have a virtual team and have a team global, which again is just going to make our business a lot more better because, um, number one, we have no office overheads. So I know a lot of people who have office overheads and they're thousands and thousands of pounds every single month coming out just to have a roof of one location uh, for their team. Okay. Now there is some benefits to having a, a team, um, you know, all in one place, but I actually think it's a lot more beneficial to have a virtual team. Okay. I've been doing this for the last five years. Um, you know, we're still moving forward, still getting shit done. And I know you can utilize it as well. Um, so there's no massive offer overheads, which is going to help you become more lean. Um, but also you get better productivity. You know, you're not stuck in traffic. You're not, you know, waiting for the printer. You're not, you know, waiting for certain things to happen in the office. You're, you're nimble. You can make quicker decisions. And after all, working in my environment, why home space has made me a lot more productive going forward. Okay. Now, if you've got kids, I haven't got kids when I'm saying this, but you know, if you've got kids, you know, set some barriers in place where you have a time management framework. One of those things is to have a calendar, a family calendar, just know when your family are actually working on your business going forward. Also, it saves time. As I've mentioned, you're not commuting to an office through train, two hours, three hours, one hour, whatever it may be, back and forth. Um, you're not getting stuck in like tr um, public transport. So if there's delays, if there's, 
you know, disruption, people kicking off on public transport. If there's crashes on the M1, whatever it may be, it saves time. You get up in the morning, go to the gym when it's open, um, and then crack on with the day. Um, those few extra hours in the day are going to separate you from the pack from those who actually have offices. And also you get to attract better talent. Um, the reason I say this is because, you know, let's say I'm based in Nottingham right now, okay? That means typically if I've got someone I want to work with in Cape Town or even London, well, I've got to think about their um, needs. I've got to think about them moving their family to Nottingham to work with, um, you know, myself and the team. I've got to think about um, the impact it could make on them. I've got to think about, um, you know, actually paying them more potentially because they may have to, you know, wiggle things around in finances to get them to work here. Where instead, I've got a global audience, a global talent pool I can work with. I don't need to be in one location, you know, and we've proven this time and time again. Um, so for you, if you have a, um, you're an office right now, um, think about that as well, because really people are going to look at your location. For example, if they're based in London and they're in your base in Nottingham, they're going to look at your ad, your job ad and go, it's too far for me. I can't travel there every day. Whereas if you say in your ad, you don't need to travel. We work remotely that is going to have a huge, huge, huge impact, which is going to be cool. So the next one is customer concentration. Okay. This is a bit like lead source concentration. And it's a very simple rule that I like to stick by. This basically means that if you're, if one, if you're one of your customers makes up for 20% of your revenue, you could be in a troublesome state. Okay. Um, hey, Trina, hope you're doing well. Um, we are going through the seven steps, seven ways you can recession proof your business. Um, I'm going to leave this recording up at the end of the session so you can go back and watch it. So this um, basically means that not having one customer that accounts for 20% of your revenue. Okay. Um, if that person were to go, then you're going to be trouble again because that's a big dent in your business if they leave. Instead, what I would recommend is having multiple, uh, a lot of um, customers making up smaller percentages of your um, of your revenue because then if one or two leave, well, or, or even five leave, you've still got loads more customers to serve you and serve your business. Um, so for those who are in B2B right now and one of your customers make up for 20% of your revenue, you know, just really think about, again, not having all your eggs in one basket and diversifying that customer demographic. Um, again, you're building these things as almost a deterrent if case things do go wrong. But I see it time and time again, where in situations like this, a recession, that, you know, you don't really want to make a big customer leave um, because it's going to make a massive dent in your business, unfortunately. So it's a great tip going forward. The next one is to create assets in your business. Okay. Um, you know, this is one of the reasons why, um, I think a lot of businesses will thrive if they've got these in the, during these times. Um, now what do I mean by assets? Assets are typically things that deliver value without you being present. Okay. So we have an online portal at shift success. We have my book that's going out there speaking to people. We have the brochure that gets sent out. We have the podcast, we have YouTube, we have the Facebook group, you know, we have these things, these assets that are digital that continue to deliver value over and over again. It's building that relationship up with police officers who are interested in what we do. Um, and as a result, you know, that's why, you know, we are where we are today. Um, so if you're thinking you're your business right now, think about what assets you can create that are going to deliver your value time and time again. Now, why it's key to have assets out there is because literally you transcend space and time. So with I'm, if I'm having um, a walk with my dogs, if I'm in the gym, if I am, um, God, if I'm doing some other activity that isn't business, well, these things you can see on the screen right now, and these are some of them, continue to deliver value without me being present. I'm literally, you know, myself, my team are literally giving value without us being there. You create it once and it delivers value over and over and over again. Um, a real big thing I want you to take away, start thinking about your business as an asset business, as a media company, delivering these certain things to your target customer. Okay. Create assets, real, real key. And the next one is opportunity. So, um, 
the mindset is going to be a big factor going forward from this. Okay. Um, huge. Um, I have spoke to, um, people who have got kids who are, um, I've spoke to people who are pregnant. Um, I've got people who have got businesses, they've got kids and they're pregnant and they are smashing the business world right now. They've been impacted by this, but they're pushing on, they gain opportunity from this. Okay. Um, and I want you to take from this as well, that there's huge opportunity to come from this. And we are in fact going to go through an entrepreneurial boom in the last two weeks alone, we had, um, 13, um, members of the police join shift success. Okay. And there's a number of reasons why they've joined such as they want opportunity, and um, they don't want to go through this again because unfortunately they've got to deal with this kind of virus. They want that control back, and also those who are in business right now, but they're kind of being impacted by the, by this, and they want to know what to do. Um, and I firmly believe at the end of this, we are going to go through a huge boom. And it's those who spot the opportunity, those who ride this rocket, who are going to prosper from these times. Okay, I guarantee it. Um, so many businesses are started out of um, an e economic downturn, okay? We've seen in 2009 and 10, we had the likes of Vemno, Uber, WhatsApp, huge companies. As a result, that creates different services and it has this ripple effect. Um, and I firmly believe in this era, what we're going to have is got a lot of virtual businesses propping up, which is good for people like me and you and um, those who are nimble because it's just going to better our lifestyle, really. So for those right now, what I would say is to plan and prepare, okay? So some things that we've been doing at Shift Success, I don't mind sharing with you, is that we've got a new scorecard created, okay? We are going, um, we've had a lot more nurses reaching out to us, members of the NHS, mental health nurses, um, and we are creating an NHS scorecard. We're going to be launching that when this all calms down because it's not the right thing to do right now. Um, and we're preparing ourselves, right? We're getting ready. We're putting ourselves in a different position. We're changing our website around to speak to NHS members more. Um, I'm writing another book. Okay. So I'm writing another book. Um, I want to create another asset, um, that's going to speak to more people. Um, that's how I'm getting prepared. Um, you know, I'm, I'm having more conversations with my mentors more than ever right now, because I want to make sure I'm in the best possible position. So for you in business right now, for those who are in the job right now, and want to take opportunity going forward, plan and prepare for your future. This could be a huge opportunity for you. If you look for the opportunity and not look for the doom and gloom, protect your mindset, think about growth, not being fixed in these situations. Okay. Think positivity, think expansion, think about you going places, not about um, the things what are happening right now. This blip that we're going through will go. Okay. It will go. We don't know when it's going to be. It could be a month, two months. Uh, you know, we've paused cohort five, which uh, is a good decision. And we'll probably pick things up in July. Um, and I can't wait for that to happen because whilst other entrepreneurs are distracted now, and they can't make quick decisions. It's those entrepreneurs who can stay focused and seize this opportunity that again, will ultimately change their life and change their businesses. So um, that's the seven ways to help you recession proof your business going forward. I um, hope this has helped. Um, again, if you've just joined, you can watch it back. I'm going to leave it on the Facebook group. Um, tomorrow, I'm going live in the community about marketing. And then after that as well, I'm going to be joined by Lorna Reeves on Thursday, sharing her entrepreneurial journey. And in fact, like, Lorna is one of those people who has had a very successful business in the event space. Um, and because we can't run events, publicly anymore. And um, that's made a big impact on her business. But what she's done instead is moved her assets online. And as a result, she's smashing it again. That is what I mean by growth mindset. And she's going to be sharing that with you um, this Thursday. So um, what I like to do is go through a Q&A. And for those who are interested um, in speaking to me about their ideas or thinking about going to business, let me know in the comments below. I'll send you a booking link We'll have a private consultation with myself about your business, your plans, your strategy going forward. And uh, hopefully we can get you where you want to be if you want to take opportunity on that. Um, so let me take the floor. Is there any, comp uh, sorry, any um, questions from anyone whatsoever? Any questions?
Cool. Well, if there's any questions afterwards, drop in a comment below. I'm more than happy to answer them for you. Um, stay safe, everyone. Enjoy the sun of what you can. Um, and, and yeah, if you've got any questions or you're having business difficulty right now, you know, there's no kind of um, harm in reaching out. You've got to remove all ego in business and just ask for the help. Um, Bill, great question. Okay. Okay. got a few questions. So Bill, does Barclays not charge you for all these accounts? No, it's a completely free checking account. They do not charge you for these accounts. In relation to the bank account and the buckets, are the buckets each separate accounts? Um, so yes, in relation to the bank account, you would have, for example, one Barclays bank account, but then you can make sub accounts from that main account. Um, and essentially they are separate accounts. Yes, but they all fall under that business. So yes. Cool. Bill, do you have another question? You've typed in Q. Any other questions? Cool. Okay, well, if there's any more questions, let me know, comment below. I'll go back to them and answer them for you. Um, and yeah, I hope you enjoy this. Hope you got some value from it. If you are watching back on replay, type in replay, give it a like or something. So I know you actually like these. Um, and I won't do more of them for you. Ricky said, I've done this with my TSB account and it certainly does make things better, easier to keep track of, uh, makes him calm. Good. That's what's the whole point of this. You know, if you, if you, it's funny because a lot of people say money's not everything, right? Um, I would disagree massively. Um, no, we're not, it's not everything, but it's a big proportion of your life. Once you sort your finances out in life, it's going to alleviate a lot of stress. You become a more empowered person. You can make a bigger impact and it's a, it's a key thing, right? Um, so by doing this strategy with your bank account, I know it's going to make a positive impact. And all these things I'm teaching you, they're easy to do. Um, the reason why people don't do them is because they're easy not to do. And because they're easy not to do, we just procrastinate. We don't do them. So implement them. Really, really key. Starling offer an account where you can set up saving spaces. Fantastic, Bill. Thanks for sharing. And Starling are a good bank account here as well. Valta, hope you're doing well, mate. Been a long time. You're smashing it. I see. So guys, that's it. I'm going to, I'm going to shoot. Uh, I've got more content to create. If you did like it, um, drop me a like or something, comment, or um, just so I know that you, you have, enjoyed it. Um, and also if you want me to create more, just let me know as well. And, uh, I will see you tomorrow for the marketing training. Um, take care, stay safe, enjoy the sun. And for those in the job right now, thank you so much for all that you're doing. I uh, really appreciate it. And, uh, that's on behalf of myself and the team. Take care guys and see you soon.